Hey, I'm Caroline Career and Leadership Coach and today I want to talk about your resume because a lot of people asking me this question, Caroline, what's wrong with my resume? Why am I not standing out? I'm applying for roles I know I have the skills and experience for but no one is coming back to me and it's completely and utterly frustrating. When I call recruiters, they're not giving me feedback and I just don't know what to do anymore to stand out in this highly competitive job market. Now, since this pandemic happened, a couple of things shifted and changed and they were always there, but you might not have noticed them. So, for example, like um, it is really important to stand out as a candidate, but it is not important when you are network when you have a really good network and you can rely on it when you're actually looking for a role where you have 10 to 20 years experience in, in the same industry so whenever you are in a situation like that it's very a resume is not the, the, the main uh, important factor in your job search but it becomes important when you actually step out of that when you actually have to rely on total strangers that have never heard of you that don't know your work ethic that don't know the way you um you operate uh, they don't know your reputation when you have to rely on that and so what shifted also is because it became a very candidate rich market now what is a candidate rich market is when you have a lot of candidates that are looking for the jobs and if i'm a recruiter and if i post a job on a job board that i get hundreds if not thousands of resumes and so it's really important for you to stand out and to get noticed in that perspective so what i am all about is first of all i am such a big believer of writing your resume yourself because you need to know what how you're positioning yourself and um, your resume is only as important as the energy and effort that you put in and the, the, the words you use to communicate your unique value proposition, how you sell yourself. So basically recruiters, headhunters, HR, they are looking at you. They are seeing you through the lens that you use to position yourself. And if you fail to position yourself correctly, they they want you will miss opportunities they won't actually um see your your resume or they will overlook it because it's a perception that you give the lens you choose and to outsource that and to give that to somebody else it's a really big mistake basically because you lack that opportunity to really use that document to pitch yourself to sell yourself into an opportunity to sell yourself to people who have never never heard of you and make that right impression to them so what I'm all about so if you decide okay Caroline you convince me I will write my damn resume myself even though people see it as a necessary evil there's a certain structure and I don't mean like uh, the the layout because I can't don't care about the layout what I care about is like the psychology behind the resume because the purpose of your resume is to get you an interview if you use a resume so the purpose of your resume is to get you the interview, not the job. So the best analogy I share with all my clients and with everyone who will listen to me is your resume needs to be like a trailer of a movie. And let me explain for a second. A movie, on average, two hours long. And so when you see a trailer, it's 90 seconds long. So they have all this content and they have to choose, pick and choose what they show. But that trailer is so important because in 90 seconds you decide if you want to go and see that movie if you will buy a ticket to go to the movies and spend two hours of your time in there and that's the same that i want you to do with your resume your resume you can have like 20 years of experience but you only choose to position yourself through the lens that you want people to initially see you the rest you can actually sh tell in the interview so and that is not easy and don't think that people don't struggle 
really reducing a two hour movie into 90 seconds because it is a challenge. So of course it's going to be a challenge for you. So don't get me wrong. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's simple. You have to connect the dots and make it very clear to the other person what it is that you, the value that you bring to that organization, the outcomes that you deliver. And don't expect them to connect the dots for you because they have like two, 300 candidates to shift through. They want it easy, absorbable. They want easy content. So it's your job to connect those dots, to make sure that they understand very clearly what you are all about. Okay, so the psychology behind a resume. So for me, there are five key non-negotiable elements. And the first key non-negotiable element is your pitch, your unique value proposition, the way you describe who you are. And the biggest mistake I do, I see people make is like it's centered around them. It's only one dimensional. And what I want you to do is actually broaden it up and look at it from different dimensions. So look at it, what it meant for your boss and for the stakeholders or the key stakeholders or the senior leadership team. Look at it from the other side, what that meant for your for the company that you were working in. So think about it differently. Don't center it around you, center it around them. So that is a start. That is your 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 pitch, the beginning of your resume, your career set statement. Some people call it your executive summary. So however you want to call it, basically that is what it's all about. It can't be generic. It can't be fluffy. It can't be too common. It needs to be connecting your dots and selling you, but in an authentic way. Again, like I said, it's not an easy process, but it's simple formula. Secondly, what I want you to do, so I want you to think about your career statement as your promise, a promise to a company what it is that you can do. Second element, you have your key skills. Now, a lot of people that I work with, because they have over 15 years experience as senior leaders, like senior leaders in terms of the seniority, like that they have over 15 years experience, and so they have a lot of skills. They have done a lot of things in their career, worked in different industries. So for them, it's always a mission to pick the skills that are needed. So what do I pick? It's very simple. Because you look at the promise, your career statement that you made, and you think about, okay, what are the skills that I need to master to deliver on that promise? And those are the skills that you pick. And then the third element is your key achievements. Now in your key achievements, people say like, Caroline, I work in policy. I work in communication. I work in blah, blah, blah. And I don't have like sales has those tangible achievements. And it's not that what a key achievement is. It could can be if you have numbers, great. But if you don't have numbers, it doesn't matter because you still have to list your key achievements because your key achievements is basically the proof you have that you have the key skills that you claim just above that section and those skills you need to deliver on your promise. You see how it all starts flowing? And so it's that flow that really makes a resume stand out because in a recruiter, a hiring manager, a decision maker, a, a HR person's mind, they go tick, 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 tick. And so, and that is the confidence that you want to create. So the third, fourth element is your uh, career history, of course. Your career history supports everything else that you said. So you have to almost think about your first page is your sales page. You're selling yourself, but in an authentic way because you don't want to BS anybody because that, that way you will get found, find out, found out. So then you have your career history that really needs us to be supportive. And as a last element, as a fifth element, you have others. And others is all your education, all your uh, the extra activity, volunteering work that you, that you do and so on. And people often ask me, it's like, do I still put volunteering on my resume? Do people actually, do, do they care? And my answer is yes. It's like, okay, maybe recruiter, HR, they might not care as much and just 
skin skim over it but it is like if you do a patty for example for diving or you have like you do tap dancing or you do any other thing in your in your spare time even hobbies it's like if people see that it's like oh you do that it's an icebreaker and it could be a, a subject of interest so for example i had a client who put on his resume that he was a, a paddy dive instructor paddy instructor and so he was having an a, an interview with a senior executive and so the, the the executive was a really big fan of diving and so immediately they have that connection immediately they get got on as a house on fire so yes it is still important to give that personality but you have to be very careful in having the right balance between trying to put in your values and what you like and stuff like that and between actually like giving tangible outcomes that you achieved being in a certain position being in a certain role um and so that is really important so those are the five key non-negotiable elements now i made it very simple for you guys I have a free template, a six-figure resume template that actually talks you through exactly that and that you can go through and that you can have a look at what, what, what that actually means and how you can replicate that on your resume. So all the five steps, all the five elements gives you an idea about, okay, how do I position myself? Uh, what are they again? Because now I just um get, went through them very quickly but what the resume template does again it's not a template it's more the psychological triggers behind the template that i care about and that people care about because the only thing you want is a resume that converts that really gets you uh, an interview that's what you're looking for and so following that structure will improve your resume dramatically now, what I want to say also is that it is super, super, super important for you to get an understanding that your resume is just a tiny piece in the job search puzzle. It's not the bees all and end all. So even if your resume is A, fantastic, you have to think about your job search strategy and how you open back doors to companies how you can get interviews for jobs that aren't advertised how you increase your visibility and so and how you create opportunities in this really tough market and that is so key because your resume like i said it's just a tiny tiny piece and even though if you get that right if you don't have the right strategy it can go all in a black hole of doom and so you need to know how to navigate this job market so if you really want to work with me um, what i do i specialize in working with leaders so those are people with 15 years plus experience and that could be like that could be from manager head of director executive and if you want to work with me on a crafting your narrative crafting your pitch to make sure that it's authentic but it also sells you um, if you want to be, if you want to create your resume, your LinkedIn profile that stands out from the crowd and it's really aligned with what you truly can do that reflects really your capability and a uh, and see if you want to learn how to navigate this job market how to position yourself and how, how to increase your visibility open back doors to companies um, and land interviews for roles that aren't advertised create opportunities if that is really of interest to you and if you say like I want to take action now then schedule in a call with me where we can actually go through that and see how that can work for you so the call the link for the call I will just see if I still have it this is the link for the call so go to newhorizoncoaching.com.au forward slash call and uh, look basically like have a, a book in the time to chat and in that chat what we simply do it's not going to be a salesy yucky salesy call where I'm going to be yapping away uh, it's going to be me identifying where you're at because every situation is different and so what I want to do is get to know your situation and then I want to understand really clearly what the roadblocks are 
And being in this game for a very long time, having worked through unemployment rate of 11%, having worked through a recession, I can show you what a good strategy would look like. And we can work through that. And at the end, if you say like, Caroline, you're my lady, uh, let's work together to make this happen, to implement this system, we can talk about that too. And otherwise, I can promise you, you have like the best idea insights of that strategy to date. And basically, you have discovered more about your career and job search than you have done probably in a while. So scheduling that call if you want to find out more. Otherwise, make sure to download my six-figure resume template. It's going to really uh, shed some, give you some insights on how to structure and the psychology behind the resume. And um, if you have any more questions, please reach out and let me know what it is that I can help you with. Thank you so much and um, speak to you soon. Bye.